So who's the interesting atom over here? Negative carbon. Even, even before I even look at these guys, I can already say, is this going to be at a head or a tail? Tail. Yes. All right, even if I hadn't even seen these reagents here, I would know that this, this carbon has to be at the tail. That's the whole point of making a grid yard. The only question is, who am I going to put at the head? Well, you tell me. Who are we going to put at the head of that arrow? Carbon. The, carbon the carbonyl carbon. That's right. So I think some of you were suggesting that we should put a proton over here. Yeah. Well, that would be great if we had a proton on an electronegative atom. Those are the protons that are easy to grab. It's relatively easy to grab a proton from, say, an oxygen or a nitrogen. Mm. But I, I don't think you guys have seen any reactions. Well, uh, you haven't seen any uh, ionic reactions where we grabbed a proton off of a carbon. All right. It's, a lot, um, it's not that easy to take a proton off of a carbon, so we're not going to be doing that. So, um, we're not, uh, so we're not going to take any protons off of these carbons over here. Um, so there are no, um, so basically, who do you take protons off of protic solvents, as we were saying? We take protons off of protic solvents. That is, places where you have a, a hydrogen on an oxygen or a nitrogen. Maybe another electronegative atom, but definitely not a carbon. Okay. Um, so someone else was suggesting we attack the carbonyl carbon. Now, um, let's see why is that reasonable. Well, it's certainly reasonable for this carbon to be at the tail, because it has a full negative charge. Why is it reasonable for this carbon to be our electrophile? Now, let's go into a little bit more detail here. Let us focus on the charges a little bit more. What does it take to be uh, an electrophile? What have we learned as an electrophile? Yeah, we've learned that basically electrophiles are pretty much always carbons carbons with full or partial positive charges. We should watch out for carbons with full or partial positive charges. Does this have a partial positive charge? Yes, because it's bonded to the oxygen. That's the reason that we don't attack this carbon over here. We're not going to attack this carbon over here because it doesn't have any partial charges. So oftentimes it's really helpful to put the charges in. You always need to ask whether your arrows are reasonable. Well, this is a reasonable arrow because there's a partial positive at the head and a negative at the tail. So ask. Once we've got our nucleophile, we should ask who's a good electrophile over here. Well, electrophiles are carbons um, with uh, full or partial positive charges. And we saw last time we've got to make room for that by kicking these electrons up. Otherwise, we would break the octet rule. So we have to kick these electrons up here. All right, so let's go ahead and draw the product from that step. Now, again, if we really understand electron pushing arrows, we should now be able to draw the product because I've given you the electron pushing arrow. So make sure that you're drawing the correct product there. It might help to number the carbons to make sure that you're putting everything in the right place. All right, so I'm going to number a few carbons. I'm going to number this carbon over here, just so it's easier to locate it. And uh, I'll number these carbons over here, two, three, and four. Remember, these are not IUPAC numbers. They're just reference numbers. So I'll number this one and these, because I want to keep track of those carbons. Now, I'm going to again use the redraw and modify technique. I'm just going to redraw this ring. Here's the number one carbon. Now, I know that this arrow means that the number one carbon is taking its lone pair and forming a bond. Forming a bond with whom? Who is the number one carbon forming a bond with? Other carbon, 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 carbon number three. Yeah, here's where the number comes in handy. It's forming a bond with carbon number three. So I'm going to put that number in. Now, very carefully, step by step, who is carbon number three connected to? Three things. Number two, four, and the oxygen. One. Two, four, and the oxygen. Notice how I did this very one little step at a time. Why didn't I just draw it in one fell swoop? Because I always make mistakes when I do that. So if you're like me, don't try to do it in one fell swoop. Do one little bit at a time. Ask, who is the number one going to be attacked, attacked, uh, connected to? And then who is number three going to be connected to? And of course, you can't even ask that question unless you've labeled these with numbers. So put in numbers. Of course, you, you should use your own judgment. I'm not really interested in these little carbons down here, so I'm not going to put numbers on those. But any carbon that's interesting, let's put the numbers in. 
So for example, I think I saw a couple of people who at least at the start were kind of connecting the number one to the number two. Maybe you kind of caught yourself there. Um, but if you're using the numbers, it's, you're going to be less likely to connect at the wrong place. Um, so we're not attacking the end carbons here, we're attacking the middle carbon. Now, um, you guys should be uncomfortable because I left out the most important part. The most important part is the charges. So who's at the initial tail? Negative carbon, which becomes neutral. Yeah, it started neutral. I'm sorry, it started negative, so it becomes neutral. I think I saw someone who had a positive charge here, but that doesn't... There you go. Okay. And who... We have to change one other charge. The O. That's the final head. This is the final head, and it becomes... Minus. Minus. Yeah, yeah. It's at the head, so it's becoming negative. It's gaining electrons. Good. Maybe I'll draw that over here. So here's that oxygen. Now, the most elegant thing to do now is to show the magnesium bromide close to the oxygen as a kind of counter ion. You could show an ionic bond between the oxygen and the magnesium. I don't know if your instructor cares about that. The important thing is to get the right charges. Again, nothing is happening to the magnesium bromide. It's just keeping the positive charge and floating around and twiddling its thumbs and forming ionic bonds to wherever the charge goes. So over here, the magnesium bromide, we showed it as ionically bonded to the number one, because this had the charge. But in the product, we showed the magnesium bromide ionically bonded to the oxygen, because it had the charge. All right, so here's our product over here. Um, and again, I, I kind of do this very slowly. What's the fast way to get the right product? There is no fast way. If you try to do it fast, you're going to make a mistake. Take your time and do it one little step at a time. Okay, uh, now if this makes sense, we can uh, go on to the next step. Uh, so let's go on to that next step here. We might as well show the mechanism for that too. Uh, let's see, to, uh, so we're going to put in the H3O plus here. Now, first of all, who's the interesting atom in this intermediate? Minus oxygen. Yeah, you've got to focus on where the charge is. Uh, is this going to be at a head or a tail? Tail. tail. All right. Even before I even look at this step two, I know this guy's at the tail. This is also very helpful. Uh, as the second language book says, every arrow has two parts, a head and a tail. A lot of people don't want to draw the arrow until they know both parts. But once you know where one of the parts is, it's helpful to put that in. So I already know where the tail is. So I'm going to put the tail in. And now where should I put the head? Uh, the hydrogen. Not the oxygen. Nope. This is going to be a protonation. So this is going to go on the hydrogen. So we have to draw this with one proton sticking out over here. And then we have to show these electrons being freed up over here. All right, and then I'm running out of space, but... Uh... So that will give us this product. I'm running out of space, so I'll do it again. So here's our final product over here. And at this point, uh, we're going to totally forget about the magnesium bromide. After you add the second reagent, forget about the magnesium bromide. No one cares about that anymore. Okay, so I'm not even going to bother keeping the magnesium bromide anymore. Once you get to the second numbered step, forget we about it. H2O? Um, that can't hurt, although that's just really the solvent. We don't usually write solvent molecules, but that is a product over here. This is what everyone cares about, this organic product. It doesn't um, matter whether the, hy the hydroxide is in the middle or not, does it? Um, let's see. Well, you certainly couldn't put it over here, right? Well, I... I or did. would you? No, I didn't. I just yeah. put it right there. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, well, let's see whether it matters. Is this a stereo center? No. No, so it doesn't matter what way you show the bonds moving. Uh, since it's not a stereo center, it doesn't matter what direction you show the bonds in. Or this is not accurate geometry anyway, right? Because what's the true geometry of this carbon? Uh, tetrahedral. tetrahedral, which means the only way to draw it is with dashes and wedges. 
this is all, this is just a fake picture anyway, but that's okay. You don't need dashes and wedges unless something's a stereo center. So yeah, it would be perfectly okay. Tip of the OH over here and two methyls over here. However, I, I don't think that's best though because it's good to try to draw your product so that it kind of looks like your starting materials. That makes it easier to see the changes that have happened if you're using the redrawn modified technique. What's really happened here is we've changed this carbonyl oxygen into an alcohol, right? We've changed the carbonyl oxygen into an alcohol. Since the carbonyl oxygen was kind of pointing in the middle of the starting material, it'll be clearer to you what you're doing if you put it in the middle over here as well. But, but either of those would be right. Okay, 